this is part two. Uh, we've been talking about uh, prosperity, godly prosperity. And uh, I won't go over what uh, I did in part one. So you can review part one yourself to get a general idea. But I left off talking about uh, <clears throat> how Adam and Eve or mankind was tricked into eating the forbidden fruit. And what the forbidden fruit was, was the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So prior to them eating of the, of the fruit of this tree, they only had knowledge of good. They had no knowledge of evil. They didn't really even realize evil existed. So Satan tricked them into eating the fruit, which then gave him license to come in and control them through the knowledge of evil. That gave him free reign then in the earth realm. So what happened is when he became their Lord, so to speak, because he tricked them into giving him control. You know, like Satan may start off in the back seat, but eventually he's going to be driving the car because his nature is to take over. Okay, that's the nature of Satan, you know. And so anyway, he kills, he steals, and destroys. Go to John 10.10. 10. That's a key scripture. I said in part one that there are key scriptures. That's the next key scripture, so you can go there. John 10.10. 10. It talks about the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come, I meaning Jesus, have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That's what John 10.10 10 says. Okay, The thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And a lot of ministers say that's the dividing line of the Bible. That's letting you know that Satan is about evil. Jesus, God is about good. Okay. So uh, then back to uh, Genesis again. So when they partook of the forbidden fruit, that gave Satan a license to come into the earth realm and to be the ruler of the earth realm. In other words, the authority, the dominion that I said in from part one, that God had given to man, God intended for man to have that dominion because God knew that if man was in charge, then he was in charge because God functioned through, I mean, man functioned through God because God had created man in his image. So God had control then of the earth realm through man because man only knew of God. But when they allowed Satan to have control, now all of a sudden God's on the outside looking in. He has no control of the earth through man. Because he controls the earth through man. This is why prayer is so important. Everybody wonder why prayer? Why you need to pray? Why you need to pray? Because prayer invites God into your situation. Without prayer, God cannot get involved in your situation. And I said he cannot. It does not mean he doesn't have the power to. But he would violate his own word. Because he gave you authority. He gave you dominion. So when he gave you authority and gave you dominion. He meant for you to have authority and have dominion. If he all of a sudden just steps in and takes over, then he's violated his word. And like I said in part one, God is not a man that he should lie. He can't violate his word. Whatever he says goes. Okay. So now all of a sudden God's on the outside looking in. Satan is in control. That's when sin entered the world. Sin entered the world because they wanted to have a knowledge of good and evil. This is what Satan had promised them. He, was, he told them in the garden. He said, well, basically, God is holding back from you. God, there's, God has more, but he doesn't want you to know it. So by partaking of this fruit, then I will give you more knowledge, which he did, but he gave them a knowledge of evil. They didn't need to have a knowledge of evil because they were living solely by good. But by them having a knowledge of evil, that invited Satan into the earth realm to control things. That's where sin, like I said, entered the world. Okay, I mentioned in part one that... Uh, John chapter 12, John chapter 14, and John chapter 16 all talk about Satan is the prince of this world. This is what Jesus said himself, that Satan was the prince of this world. So if Satan is the prince of this world, what is he? What, what was Jesus saying? It means that Satan is controlling the earth through his systems. He controls the earth through the economic systems. 
He controls the earth through the educational systems or the media. He controls the earth through the health care and the food industry. In this country, the FDA or the AMA, they control what we eat. They control our sicknesses. They control the diseases. They control the medicines, the pharmaceuticals. So all of that is under Satan's rule. So if we see that we have a health care problem, if we see there's economic problems, if we see there's social problems and issues, if we see there's political problems, of course we're going to see that there are problems because they're Satan's system. Satan's system has to go down. It has to fall. There's no way Satan's system can stand because it's not based on love. It's not based on any laws of God. It's a perversion of God's law. So that's what's happening today. That's why things are falling apart. And they're going to get worse. They're not going to get any better. And they're not going to get any better for the Christian either unless he learns how to operate in God's system and not Satan's system. The reason why I said I was doing this is because we need to understand more about prosperity. But in understanding more about prosperity, we need to go and understand the Bible itself. What was the purpose of the Bible? What was the purpose for man? And that's why we're going back and doing this study. Okay, First Thessalonians 5.23. It's another scripture. Key scripture. It talks about spirit, soul, and body. I mentioned in the first part that we are spirits, we live inside bodies, we possess souls. That's very, very important because we are spirits. We are not our bodies. We associate too much with our bodies. We allow our bodies too much control over our lives. When your spirit is supposed to rule over your body and tell your body what to do. Instead, our bodies are telling us what to do. Okay, And that's an issue that a lot of people are having now. It says... In 523 of 1 Thessalonians, and, every, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly or completely. And I pray that your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved blameless till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned in the first part, what is the soul? So you can go back and review part one and it'll tell you what makes up the soul. So we are spirits, okay? Okay, now let's go back to Genesis again. And we're going to see some more key scriptures to understand what went wrong. Okay, so now God's on the outside looking in. Okay, and God wants to get control of man again. But he can't control man because Satan is in control. So the only way then he can control again or have control or have any kind of reign in the earth realm because he relinquished his authority when he gave us dominion, like I said earlier, that means he has to some kind of way get in. So what he does is he institutes or sets up a covenant with man. Okay, Very key thing on understanding of covenant. Okay, In the Western world, we somewhat understand covenant. But we don't understand covenant like covenant really should be understood. And uh, we're finding out that more and more through the centuries, people are not honoring covenants you know, like they did initially. Because a covenant is usually based on, on mutual agreement between two parties. And the only way the covenant can be broken is by death. Okay, That's what a true binding covenant is. But uh, we have contracts. We break contracts. You know, We use loopholes in the law to get around contracts. Uh, marriage is supposed to be a sacred covenant. But... All of a sudden, people say we have un unreconcilable differences, so all of a sudden we're going to divorce. But the Bible says death is the only thing that's to separate you from the covenant. So we don't have an understanding of covenant. If we did, we would, we would be more true to our words and we would be more bound by those covenants. So you really need to do a study on covenant to really understand what covenant is. But when God made a, a covenant with man, it was to benefit both. That's what a covenant is supposed to do, benefit both. It's like when I went into a covenant with my wife and we got married. We've been married. It'll be 40 years, our next anniversary. Uh, our covenant was based on the fact that she was bringing something to the marriage. I was bringing something to the marriage. She was bringing something to the marriage that I didn't have. I was bringing something to the marriage that she didn't have. And together we would become one and we would have it all. Okay. This is what it means to be able to have a covenant. 
Um, so anyway, um, because of the covenant, then that made me complete and whole and made her complete and whole. So that's what a covenant does. That's my time. Okay. All right. This is it for part two. We're going to go to part three.